Good morning, everyone. Um, hopefully you can all hear me OK. Um, I am working from home today, so apologies in advance for any background noise that might be picked up. Um, so I'm Catherine Piper. I'm a marketing executive at Bytes aligned specifically to Microsoft. Um, firstly, I just want to thank you all for taking the time to join our Introducing Windows 365 webinar this morning. Um, before we kick off the webinar, I'm just going to quickly run through some housekeeping and introductions with you. So you will be muted during the webinar, but please do feel free to submit any questions you have through the question box um, on the right hand side at any time during the webinar, or alternatively, you can email tell me more at bytes.co.uk. Um, we will be doing a Q&A session at the end to answer any submitted questions. If we don't get time to answer them all on the webinar, we will take them offline and get back to you after the webinar. Um, this will be being recorded, so it will be made available to you later today or tomorrow um, if you want to review it again or share it with any colleagues that might be interested. And there will also be a short survey at the end where you can request a call back or one of our one-to-one -one engagements with one of our specialists. Um, the survey will only take you a couple of minutes to complete, but it's just really beneficial for us to get a little bit of feedback. So if you could do that, that'd be much appreciated. So today's webinar will be hosted by Tom Hickling, who is an Azure program manager at Microsoft, and Pete Ely, who is our modern workplace lead at Bytes. Um, today, Tom will be providing you with an overview of Windows 365, looking at some of the key features, capabilities and considerations, and then doing a little bit of a recap on Azure Virtual Desktop and covering off some of the similarities and differences between um, Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365. Um, and he'll also briefly be touching on a few Windows 11 considerations um, and things to look out for for the future. And then Pete will be joining to discuss the Byte services and workshops that we have available to help you with your deployment and ongoing management of Windows 365. So we really hope that you enjoy the webinar today and find it useful. Um, so on that note, I'm going to hand over to Tom to get going. Thank you very much. Um, can I just check that you can see my screen okay this morning before we move on? Yeah, all good. Good. Okay, brilliant. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. My name, um, as mentioned, is Tom Hickling. I'm a program manager in the AVD engineering team inside of Microsoft. Um, much like everybody, I'm guessing I'm also working from home, so apologize if you apologies if you hear any kids shouting and dogs barking. Um, but for the next, I don't know, uh, 15, 20 minutes or so, um, I'm just going to be talking a, a little bit about AVD and obviously Windows 365, which GA'd yesterday. So just to start, um, a very uh, sort of marketing slide, um, but I'm guessing the audience here has been doing this kind of technology for the last number of years. Um, and if you've been doing virtual desktops, none of these use cases or needs will be anything new. There's always there always has been a requirement for some element of remote working, uh, bring your own devices, elastic workforce. Coronavirus has just um, expanded that requirement, hence why everybody has been working from home in the last uh, sort of 18 months or so, and had to push out some technology to to accommodate those users. So what Microsoft has done over the last three or so years, particularly in the cases of, of Azure Virtual Desktop, is providing scalable and easy solutions to, to meet those needs. <clears throat> and that has been expanded upon, obviously, with the latest release of Windows 365. So we're going to go through some of the comparisons and some of the differences. Now, it's worthwhile just mentioning that I don't like to do comparisons. And in fact, nobody at Microsoft really likes to do comparisons of these two products because they don't really compete. They actually are quite complementary and really designed for slightly different use cases. Now, obviously there are some significant similarities and there are some overlaps in the use case. So whilst I don't like it, we're absolutely going to do a com comparison so that you can see some of the differences and where some uh, features might be better suited. Now on here, I've just highlighted the major 
differences. There's lots of smaller differences that probably fit inside of these categories, but it's worthwhile calling out from a high level what those differences are. So starting with Azure Virtual Desktop, it is a flexible platform. Um, it's built upon Azure and it enables your IT admins, specifically your VDI admins, <clears throat> to make use of lots of services inside of Azure, as well as partner services in Azure and outside of Azure, um, and gives them the most choice and flexibility and control over what they deploy, how they deploy it, when they deploy it. That brings a lot of functionality. Um, with that functionality comes complexity. Windows 365 was designed <clears throat> to be simple, so to remove a lot of that complexity, a lot of that admin, and a lot of ongoing management. But with that, then you do remove some of that choice, some of that flexibility, some of that functionality. The second most important difference is that AVD is consumption-based pricing i.e. this is pay as you go. So you deploy a thousand VMs, then your Azure bill would reflect that. However, if you power off 900 of those overnight or all 1,000 of those, we will stop charging you for the compute element of that infrastructure. So this, is, this gives customers the capability of managing their estate and powering things off with the, the result being that your Azure bill is significantly reduced. Windows 365 is, like we said, is designed to be simple. So this is a fixed price service. So it's a fixed price per user per month for the SKU of Cloud PC that you deploy. So it's really designed for those organizations that just want the simplicity and understanding what their fixed pricing will be and can accordingly match that to their fixed budgets. However, if you're an organization that actually prefers to have that consumption-based pricing, then perhaps AVD is, is the better solution for you. So just a little bit <clears throat> of background. If you've ever heard me present before or anybody from Microsoft on AVD, you've probably seen a slide like this, and it describes the high-level architecture of Azure Virtual Desktop. So we'll just start at the top there with a user who's using any of the Azure Virtual Desktop clients. So that's a Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, HTML5 client, and soon to be a, a Linux client. Now those users can connect from wherever they are as long as they have internet access and they access or, or their traffic traverses our global entry point, which is Azure front door in conjunction with Azure traffic manager to connect you to the lowest latency instance of our control plane which is the second box down so that's the avd service so this is our evergreen service where it admins can go in and make some configuration changes um, get diagnostics information but it also does the brokering and the connection to for, for a user to a virtual machine for them to use and that's all secured behind azure active directory the second box down is your Azure subscription. So this is where you have the total control around what you design, what you architect, and what you deploy. And in there, you can deploy as many virtual machines that you want. Again, this is totally under your control. Microsoft has no visibility into there. We don't want to, and in fact, there's no mechanism to do that. Um, and that does require line of sight to a domain controller to enable authentication onto those VMs. Now, all of those VMs will reside upon a virtual network that can optionally be connected back to on-premises if that's where your AD resides or if there's any other services you need to consume. And you can also break out of um, Azure directly to the internet to consume whatever it might be. So Office 365 is a perfect example there. And that all sits upon our IaaS platform. So we manage up to and including the hypervisor, and then you manage from the operating system up. If we move to the Windows 365 architecture, you will see it's very similar. And that's because it is built on top of Azure Virtual Desktop. So it uses exactly the same clients. It uses exactly the same control plane. However, the difference here is completely hidden. So you, you can't go in and make any configuration change, changes to your AVD tenant. Um, and then the difference is, 
that the virtual machines reside inside of a Microsoft managed subscription on your behalf. So this is not inside of your Azure subscription. Now you do still require an Azure subscription because that's where we locate the virtual NIC that sits upon your virtual network. So the virtual machine in fact resides in the Microsoft subscription. We have this thing called Hobo, host on behalf of, which um, connects that virtual machine to the, the NIC that resides inside of your Azure subscription. And again, that all sits upon our IaaS platform. So with the exception of the virtual machine residing in a Microsoft subscription, the architecture is essentially exactly the same. And this is just a globe showing um, all of the uh, gateways that we just mentioned. So the red dots represent the gateway locations. So we've got uh, most of the, the globe covered and we will connect you to the closest one of those in terms of lowest latency. The blue dots represent the Azure regions that you can go and deploy AVD VMs. And the green dots represent the Azure regions that you can go and place Cloud PC VMs in at this point in time. So let's just go into a little bit more detail about some of the major differences. Like I said, Cloud PC has been designed for simplicity. Azure Virtual Desktop is effectively uh, your VDI or your virtual desktop solution running in the cloud, which is optimized for flexibility. As it stands today, when, um, Cloud PC or Windows 365 only supports Windows 10. Windows 11 will be coming soon. Whereas in AVD, we support Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11 as well when it comes, and Windows Server 2012 up, so including 2016, 2019, as well as 2020 when that gets released. And that includes, uh, obviously, our multi-session operating systems. Now, so it's worth just mentioning with Windows 11 that that will be coming very soon after GA. So what I can say, particularly around Azure Virtual Desktop, is the expectation is that we will have day one support for Windows 11. Cloud PC might be slightly behind, but the um, it won't be too far behind that, that point. Um, as you're probably aware, when Windows 11 was announced, there were some limitations around hardware, the physical devices that could run Windows 11. So what that means is that either of these solutions is a great way to run Windows 11 without having to address any physical device limitations. So you could start testing it as soon as it's available in, in both of those platforms and then perhaps move to a production service running on top of that. Cloud PC is full desktops only. So you're connecting to the entire desktop in, on that virtual machine. Whereas with AVD, it's both full desktops as well as the capability of remote app. So this is the capability of presenting just the window for specific applications and hiding the need to present the full desktop to your end users. Cloud PC is managed almost exclusively inside of MEM, Microsoft, Microsoft Endpoint Manager. You do, like we've seen, do still need an element of Azure portal access. So this is just the ability to create a virtual network, as well as the ability to create virtual NICs for those uh, Cloud PCs as they get deployed. With AVD, the full control is inside of both the Azure portal as well as the MEM portal and possibly SCCM or any other third party mechanism you're using to manage those virtual machines. There are two editions of Cloud PC. There's an enterprise edition as well as a business edition for smaller organizations, which is a direct self-service model. With AVD, it's, like we said, it's all transacted through the Azure, uh, Azure platform and the Azure marketplace, and it gives you the ability to add on partner solutions such as Citrix and VMware, which bring their own um, cloud technologies, as well as their own protocols, as well as other partner solutions. So NetApp and um, Nerdio, to name uh, just a couple of those. We mentioned the pricing. So it is per user, per month pricing based upon the SKU that you deploy. AVD is um, fully consumption-based pricing. So that includes the capability of adding things like reserved instances or pay-as-you-go pricing in conjunction with our auto-scaling services to power off that infrastructure to reduce your costs. Cloud PC is dedicated VMs. So a user gets one VM. In fact, they can get multiples, but they are all 
dedicated individual VMs just for them and cannot be shared. With AVD, we, we do have dedicated personal VMs as well as this concept of pooled with our multi-session operating systems. So this is the ability to have a pool of VMs and having multiple users logged on simultaneously to the same VM, and obviously multiples of those same VMs inside of a pool, and managing the user profile separately from the virtual machine. So a user can log into any VM on any given day to any um, inside of any of those pools. Cloud PC currently <clears throat> is restricted to just 12 VM SKUs in those 13 regions that we saw earlier, whereas with AVD, it's basically any VM that's available in any of the regions in all of those uh, Azure regions we saw earlier. And so I suppose just to finish on this comparison, I suppose that the clue is in the name. Cloud PC is a PC, just so happens to be located in the cloud, whereas AVD is your virtual desktop platform. This is your VDI service or your virtual desktop service that's baked on top of the power of Azure. Now, it's worth pointing out that the, in, in terms of customer conversations, we typically are speaking to two different teams inside of a customer when we talk about these two products. So when we talk to cloud, when we talk about cloud PC to customers, we are typically talking to the desktop team. So this is the, the IT team that manages desktops or laptops, distributing those laptops out to, to people uh, who might be out working in the field. <clears throat> Whereas when we go to talk about AVD, we are typically talking to the VDI team. So your sort of Citrix VMware or RDS teams who've been managing this type of technology for many years. Now, there's a whole lot more details that can, we can go into, which we won't. Um, the best comparison that I've seen is actually from one of our partners called Nerdio. And I would suggest going to that link at the bottom there to have a look at the, the, the additional details of comparison. <clears throat> So we mentioned those 12 SKUs. So this is what's available um, from one CPU all the way up to eight vCPUs and different um, disk and memory options inside of both of those. <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the technical requirements you see there, now customers will need a license. And I'm, I'm not gonna go through all of those because you can see that, but you will need to have either a Windows or M365 license. You will need an Azure subscription, and that is just to be able to place that virtual network on. That network needs line of sight to your domain controllers, wherever they may be. <clears throat> we also require a hybrid Azure AD. Now this is a function inside of Azure AD Connect, which synchronizes the AD computer objects up into Azure AD. And then, <clears throat> then we register those computer objects with Azure AD that then makes them available to be managed through Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Now that's actually not a requirement with Azure Virtual Desktop, although you could absolutely do that if you wanted to, but it's not a requirement. So if you already have Azure AD Connect, but haven't got hybrid enabled, that's a change that you will need to make. Your user identities also need to be hybrid. Now this is not to be confused with hybrid Azure AD Join for the computer objects, this is just a standard functionality of Azure AD Connect, which is synchronizing users from AD up into Azure AD. The images can be consumed directly from our gallery, or you can come and bring your own and make those, av those images available inside of your Azure subscription, and Cloud PC uh, can then consume that image. We mentioned management is currently, or recommended to be Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Uh, we do also support SCCM with code management. And then the admin permissions, obviously you will need permissions to your, um, your MEM uh, tenant, as well as uh, into your Azure subscription to be able to set up that network connection, which we'll go into, in fact, we'll go into now. So we're just in the next few slides, there's a few videos that show some demos of the deployment process. There's four steps, one of which is optional. Um, to be able to go and deploy Cloud PC. So it's assigning licenses, creating what we refer to as an on-premise network connection. Optionally, we, um, you can upload your own image. We won't go into that today. And then creating a provisioning policy. So let's start by assigning licenses. Now, I'm in my um, Microsoft Admin Center, 
You can also do this step actually inside of Azure Active Directory directly. But what I'm going to do here is go to my uh, users and select my user account. And all I need to do is go to the licenses and apps and then go and put a tick in the relevant license. Now, in this instance, I've only got one, but if you did have multiple SKUs available, then you would see those listed there. All you need to do, like I said, put a tick in the box and save changes, and that user is now licensed to be able to have a Cloud PC provision for them. So that's a relatively simple task. The next task is to connect Windows 365 to your virtual network. Now, um, we name this the um, on-premises connection. Now, it's a little bit confusing because this isn't actually connecting to your on-premises network at this point in time. What this is actually doing is connecting the Windows 365 service to your Azure virtual network. Now, if your Azure virtual network has your domain controllers on it, we are all good to go. If you haven't placed your domain controllers inside of Azure and they're still on premises, that virtual network that we have connected to here needs itself to be connected back to on premises in order to enable that line of sight to your domain controllers. Now that can either be an express route connection or a site to site VPN from that virtual network. So if you haven't already configured that, then that's an extra step that you would need to enable and that's just stand there's a standard process for for configuring both express route as well as that site to site vpn so what that looks like is here so I, i'm here in the microsoft endpoint manager portal i've gone to windows 365 i'm going to my on-premises network connection and i will click on create a new connection and if you've done Azure before, this will actually look very similar to, to how you would configure anything inside of Azure. So we're just going to give this connection a name and select the subscription that contains the virtual network. And before we select the network, we select the virtual, uh, sorry, the resource group it resides in. Then we select the virtual network as well as the subnet uh, that the uh, domain controllers reside upon. And then we need to add the information about your Active Directory. <clears throat> so this is critical that you get this right because this is what is passed to the service to domain join the cloud PCs when they get provisioned in the next step. So we just need to add an account that has the ability to uh, <clears throat> domain join VMs, obviously the, um, putting the password in. That's effectively all the information that we need. Go and click on review and create and it will sit there and go off and create that connection to that virtual network. <clears throat> we have an extra service called the Watchdog service that does a whole load of checks about um, all of the requirement that all of the requirements are in place. I.e., you have Azure AD Connect in place. We have permissions on the Azure subscription. We have permissions inside of Mem. Your virtual network is in one of the supported regions. DNS is configured. Um, Basically, all of the tech, all of the checks that we need in place to enable the provisioning to work. So, with all of those passed, we are good to go. If there's any er errors here, you will see in action. There's uh, some information to go and um, rectify whatever those problems might have been. Now, that watchdog service can be run at any time. In fact, it does run periodically behind the scenes, checking that everything is still okay for any future provisions, provisionings. Um, and you can also kick this off just by clicking that retry. So if you if you suspect a change has been made that you want to verify, you can click that retry and it will go through checking every single one of those uh, components to make sure everything's good to go. <clears throat> so the final step <clears throat> is actually creating a provisioning policy. Now the provisioning policy, like it suggests, is effectively the engine that does the provisioning of the cloud PC for your particular users. So what this does, or what this requires, is to be able to, to be told the um, on-premises network connection, that will define the region that these cloud PCs get created into, the, the image that you're gonna use, so that, like I mentioned, could either be from our gallery or from um, your own image that you've uploaded, 
and then the Azure AD group that contains your users. Now that's the same group of users that need a license as we saw at the, the first step. As soon as users are placed into that Azure AD group and are licensed, then the provisioning engine will kick in and kick off the build of a Cloud PC for those users. So this quickly demonstrates what that looks like. So I've gone to my provisioning policy. Again, I will just give it a name and choose the, the on-premises network connection that enables this to connect to the virtual network. I then go and select my image so I can either have my custom or simply collect, select from the Microsoft Image Store. So here I'm uh, selecting Microsoft 365 apps. And then in assignments, this is where I select the group of users that are going to have these cloud PCs provisioned. So I just need to go and find a particular user group, select that user group, and then move to next to go and review and create that. So once that's created, that will kick off a, a build for those users. If I were to add new users to that Azure AD group, as long as they also have a license, then this provisioning policy will kick in and create Cloud PCs for those new users. So there's actually nothing that you need to do in order to provision these VMs. So it's just a matter of placing users in groups and then the policy will take care of the rest. So what does it look like from an end user's perspective? We'll start with the, um, the native web client. So um, you can go to cloudpc.microsoft.com, windows365.microsoft.com, or if you are already using AVD, you can go directly to the AVD web portal and get the same user experience. You can also, as it shows there in quick actions, download any of the other supported clients. So if you did want to run the Windows client to get more functionality, you can absolutely do that. So in this instance, I'm just going to be using the web client. The first thing to notice is that the user gets a number of um, options. They can restart, rename, and if they're having problems connecting, there's a troubleshooting button. If I open in browser, all I need to do is submit my AD credentials, and then, hey, presto, we're connected to my cloud PC natively inside of the HTML5 browser. So it's quite a seamless, slick user experience. Uh, in fact, much the same as connecting to AVD. Okay, so moving on, um, customers obviously need some monitoring capability as well as an analytics service to understand what's going on inside of their environment. So as part of Windows 365, we have this service called Endpoint Analytics, which is actually a function of Microsoft Endpoint Manager. So it actually was there before Windows 365 came along, but we've created a whole load of reports that are baked into Endpoint Analytics which cover things such as your, your resource utilization, round trip time for your remoting uh, connection. So this is sort of the RTP traffic through the management plane to the VM and back. Things like startup performance and a whole host of other reports that you would find useful in the management of um, a larger cloud PC estate. And that, like I said, is actually inside of Microsoft Endpoint Manager. So if you go to the report section and endpoint analytics, you will see these reports with recommendations and actionable, um, which are actionable to take you to go and make any changes that well, we would recommend. So I suppose just to conclude, um, both of these services are fully integrated with the wider selection of Microsoft Cloud services that we mentioned earlier. So just as a recap, we are integrated with Azure Active Directory. Um, I don't know whether you've seen, but there has been a preview launched um, inside of AVD for Azure Active Directory domain join only. So this is the capability of removing the requirement for domain controllers to be present. But like I said, the, the Cloud PC as well as the AVD services are secured behind Azure Active Directory. You can use Microsoft Defender um, as a service to, for um, antivirus protection. You can obviously be consuming Microsoft 365 apps natively with single sign-on, um, as well as managing both, um, both services through Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And as we mentioned before, all of that resides upon the Azure 
um, public cloud service. So that's what's providing the horsepower and the grunt behind these virtual machines. So it's a global hyperscale cloud platform enabling this capability. So with that, uh, thank you for your time. Hopefully that was useful. Hopefully you've learned a little bit. Um, there's lots of information available um, on the Microsoft side for Windows 365 as well as Azure Virtual Desktop. So it would be worth checking that and comparing the features of both um, to see how they marry up to your business requirements. So with that, I'm going to hand over now to Peter, who's going to take you through some of the bytes options around both of these capabilities. Thank you, Tom. Uh, that was a, a really interesting and informative presentation. Thanks so much for going through that. And um, I'm sure you'll agree, it does look like a very uh, interesting proposition from Microsoft. Um, lots to think about, and you're probably thinking at the moment around some of the use cases that this might apply to. So um, as, as has been demonstrated, there are significant differences between this new cloud PC offering and the traditional VDI offerings you're, you, you might be familiar with and maybe even have investigated as part of uh, your AVD investigations. But I suppose the, the next question to ask is where do you go from here? Um, well, there's various things we can do to recommend. Firstly, take a look uh, at Windows 365 because really you, you want to learn more about it. There's big differences has been uh, from a high level really been highlighted today between enterprise and business models that is worth understanding when you get into it. There's, there's various prerequisites that need to be understood and understanding what those different options apply to you and your needs going forward will be applicable. So worth understanding more, go to windows365.com uh, and learn more about it. There's also a trial that Microsoft will support for 30 days. So that can give you an idea of how it works. If, if you wanted that set up in your environment, give that a go. But if you, if you do want some further assistance with the decision process, perhaps you want some assistance with your project or even to get an independent view on these solutions, then we have various ways in which we at Bytes can specifically help. Um, these three areas here, you've got an envisioning workshop, which will help determine how you could potentially get the most from the use of Endpoint Manager and maybe incorporate Cloud PC into that technology stack. Um, we've got a virtual desktop assessment, which is a recommended route for anyone taking on a VDI project so that you can effectively size and ready your uh, future infrastructure needs. Uh, and what's good about this assessment is it's fully fundable based on the size of your project. So do get in touch with us if you're interested um, in, in taking advantage of that. And finally, we also run a, a complimentary service that not only helps with decision making around virtual desktops, but provides completely independent advice on whatever the challenges are you're facing with end user computing. So, you know, if it is VDI, if it's modern management, if it's patching or um, unified comms and how you bring it all together, um, we, we, we can give you that independent advice, Microsoft or non-Microsoft. So do respond as, as part of the feedback form from this webinar if you'd like to take advantage of any of these engagements. Further to this, uh, we do have a seminar on the 19th of August, which will be a, a delving deeper into these key differences between Windows 365 and AVD, but we'll also be showcasing where Citrix fits in all of this. So, you know, Citrix and Microsoft have worked very closely together to provide a service that can complement AVD when the native Microsoft tools don't quite provide the functionality of VDI that you might need for your project. So if you want to find out more, then register for this seminar on the 19th. There's going to be complimentary coffee and cake provided as part of the seminar, uh, but the setup is designed to be more of a, an interactive workshop style presentation. So numbers will be limited for this seminar. So if you are interested, please let us know as soon as possible. Uh, and based on the responses, we may be able to get another date um, sorted out if we're oversubscribed. And that's it from me, really. Um, it was a really interesting presentation. I'm sure you'll agree that it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting pros uh, proposition from Microsoft. Um, 
it's it's not a replacement of AVD by any means, but it provides an alternative option to think about. So uh, we have some time for Q and A, and I believe there have been a few questions raised. So um, Tom, if if you're able to, it'd be good to, to kind of get some of your feedback on some of these questions. Um, question around w whether it's going to be uh, available in a different region. So on Win Windows 365, as in Microsoft subscription, can you choose where the Windows 365 machine will be uh, based on its region? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. So in that slide that had the, the globe on it, there was 13 green dots that represent the regions that cloud PCs can be deployed into today. Now that, to, to go and deploy your cloud PCs into any one of those, then you would just need to create that in your, um, your provisioning policy. Um, so that provisioning policy will detect the, cloud, the virtual network that these need to reside on. That virtual network is obviously in a region. And so if you're deploying using that provisioning policy, it will place the cloud PCs in that specific region. Okay, that makes sense. Um, certainly, you've, you've got that flexibility, which is is uh, key to this, really. So that's great. So um, another question that's just been raised with AVD, um, you have used Azure AD domain service. Can you use the same approach for cloud PC? No. Um, now, the reason for that is the direction of synchronization. So with Azure AD domain services, we synchronize behind the scenes from Azure AD as the source down to Azure AD domain services. Now that's using Azure AD Connect, but it's provided as part of the service and cannot be changed. Now what that means is that um, those computer objects that get created in Azure AD domain services natively when the VMs are created are not synchronized back up to Azure AD. Hence, those computer objects will never exist in Azure AD, which means that MEM cannot, is not aware of those computer objects. Um, Cloud PC is dependent upon MEM for management and provisioning, as we've seen in the, um, in the little demos. So without seeing those VMs, um, Cloud PC wouldn't work. So unfortunately, Azure AD domain services isn't supported in Cloud PC. It's only supported in Azure virtual desktop deployment. Okay, and I'm sure the the thing is to to really highlight with this service is it's it's very new. Um, so you know the, the there possibly will be roadmap changes and announcements down the line, but initially that that's where we are at the at the moment. Is that fair yeah. to say, Tom? Yeah, yeah. So so there is obviously a long roadmap for both of these products. What I can say is that there's no plans at this date. Uh, in fact, there are no plans to modify how Azure AD domain services works. So it's it's very likely, in fact, almost completely, that um, Cloud PC will never support Azure AD domain services. Um, Azure AD domain services was really created for a very niche use case. Um, and whilst it works exactly as you would suggest, or as it suggests, there are some limitations to it because of that niche use case that was designed to facilitate. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, I wouldn't expect, um, and I would recommend customers not to um, think that Azure AD domain services will ever come to Cloud PC. Okay, that's that's cleared that one up. Um, just a, a question regarding business and enterprise, um, uh, which you touched on there. So, it, it, are you able to control business in Microsoft Endpoint Manager? Do you have control over provisioning policies, networking for business, or is it is that just not part of that model at all? Yeah, so it is part of it. Um, it only supports MEM. Um, the, the key difference here is that it's Azure AD only. So that's Azure AD domain join, A-A-D-J. Sorry, there are lots of acronyms. Um, but this is where the VM is only joined to Azure Active Directory, which means that MEM is, is fully supported. So again, this is a, an even simpler version of uh, Cloud PC. It's, it's designed to remove the requirement for having Active Directory present whatsoever, which is exactly the same use case actually for Azure Virtual Desktop. So these, these two services are um, 
are going to be dependent in the future on Azure AD only. Okay. Yeah, and, and I think it's it's worth really understanding those differences. Um, if you, if you can, anyone who's who's still on, uh, make sure you really look into those key differences between the business and enterprise and and those prerequisites, because it is key to how you view this as a project going forward. Um, just just another couple of questions: Are there any limitations when using the HTML5 connection? There are, yeah. So. Um... Things like printer redirection uh, is not supported in the in the web client. Uh, Teams media optimizations again are not supported. Uh, there is a compare the clients document on the AVD documentation. So if you were to just search for compare the RDP clients, I think is the actual title, that will show you the comparisons between all of the supported clients. Um, and what you will see is that the Windows client has the most functionality and the web client, as you would imagine, because it's not a full client, um, has the least amount of functionality. Okay. Well, there's, there's been a whole heap of questions that have come in um, and really appreciate all your feedback, everyone who has joined today's webinar. Um, we're not going to be able to answer all of the questions, but we will endeavour to get back to you um, and answer those questions as, as part of a response to you all. Um, really appreciate the attendance today. I think uh, it's, it's been very, very informative and there's, there's lots to think about um, uh, as, as part of this going forward. Tom, really do appreciate uh, you, you presenting that today. Um, as you can see on the last slide there, there will be a recording that will be sent round to you um, with, uh, in a link that you'll be able to watch again and share with colleagues. So um, just leaves me to say thank you for attending today's webinar and uh, appreciate all the uh, effort that's gone into getting that set up today. Thank you.